diversity in living organisms in this lesson we are going to discuss about the diversity in the living world we see number of plants and animals around us there are number of variety of plants and animals so not only plants and animals there are number of organisms that are not seen to our naked eye microorganisms so in nature different varieties lakhs of varieties of organisms are existing but humans are studying these organisms plants animals microorganisms etc till now we have studied more than lakhs one lakh variety of organisms so all these are studied how the study goes on how the observation goes on what is the use of observing the organisms so this is all we are going to discuss in this chapter humans they study the nature they study different organisms plants and animals that are around us because we find some uses with the organisms around us not only that we are understanding the nature so by that we can find solutions to the problems that happen in the environment that happen in a biological system so for all the purpose plants and animals are studied but studying plants and animals as it is in own way of a person is not correct not proper so the independent study of an organism is not proper it leads to confusion and chaos for example if a find if a person goes to a forest and if he finds a plant there he says that i discovered a plant and if he gives a name some x then another person goes to the forest and he finds the same plant and he says it is a so people are giving their own names individual individual or independent names of their own choice to plants and animals it is not possible to study them properly it leads to confusion so the plants or animals or organisms they should be properly named there should be a scientific method of naming and at the same time individual study of different organisms is also not easy and possible organisms before to study that organism the organisms are to be grouped then the study becomes easy so how do they make the grouping organisms either plants or animals they are made into groups according to the similarities between them the organisms that show similarities of course not 100% similarities if some similarities are there among two organisms they will be grouped under one group so in such a way depending upon the similarities the organisms will be grouped so once the grouping is done the studying is easy and systematic so once the grouping is done the naming is also easy and systematic so by that the process of studying of organisms becomes easier so the grouping of organisms is taking place scientists are grouping the organisms plants and animals and other microorganisms into different groups in a systematic way basing upon depending upon the similarities that they show so this grouping is changing from time to time the scientists have given some kind of grouping in the earlier times so that was accepted that time depending upon on basing the knowledge information available by the time but later on with time technology is developed so many advancements took place in the field of biology so still the research works are going on we are able to know more and more details about the organisms so the classification process is also gradually changing so now we are following a systematized way of classifying the organisms and on basing the classifications we are completely studying the organisms in detail so now before we look into the classification here we have some activities so with these activities we learn how to do the grouping basing on the similarities or characteristics of the organisms first we are going to talk about diversity in plants diversity in plants so plants also there are so many varieties now let us see how to observe the plants so let us do it with an activity okay so in this diversity of plants here we have a plant first let us see how to study the features of 
the leaves of a plant here we have a plant let us see that the different features so first we are writing the name of the plant it is a gram plant some bengal gram plant gram plant a sapling of a bengal gram plant so that is the name of it now let us see the leaf how is the leaf the length of the leaf l e g t h okay the length of the leaf is it long or short so it has a short leaf not very long leaf otherwise we can write the length how much length it is of uh, uh, one say uh, two centimeter or three centimeter okay and width just here for a comparison we are writing so we need not put the values just see the width so it is short and broad not narrow some leaves some plants will have narrow leaves long and narrow leaves like a coconut leaf if you see the coconut leaf it is a long and narrow leaf like this that is a coconut leaf and even paddy and even grass the leaves are long and narrow but here in this plant short and broad leaves and how is the margin of the leaf how are the margins plain plain margin certain leaves will have a saw like zigzag margin like this so this is a plain margin a smooth margin or a plain margin you can say that smooth you can say now let us see the venation how are the veins inside so these are the veins we can find some kind of lines design on the leaf if you turn the leaf back side you can see it more clearly the venation so if you see the veins there is two types of uh, venation in leaves we already studied that so what are the two different types of venation this is parallel venation in some leaves like rice grass family coconut parallel and um, in plants like this bengal gram and grams pulses reticulate venation so this kind of branching is seen this is a reticulate venation so what kind of venation we see in the sample plant we have taken reticulate reticulate so what is the color of the leaf green color green so color is green margins are smooth venation is reticulate venation and uh, short leaves broad leaves and it is the gram plant so in this way different features of the leaves the characteristics so the outline features of the leaves are listed like this in the same way we can take one more plant and we can take their names